Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Jordan. Yeah, Monero Alamos is a Mexican-focused gold mine developer, and uh, I hope to share with you a compelling investment thesis to, uh, to wit, uh, our company, even in a flat gold market, can provide you the kinds of returns that you hope for when you're, you're betting in more uh, speculative early expiration. Uh, let's make sure I can work this. Good. Uh, I will be making a few forward-looking statements today. Um, so we're multi-leveraged. Uh, we can provide organic production growth in a flat gold environment. If gold does happen to take off, that's fantastic. That's a gravy and it will compound it. Um, you know, a lot of companies you know, really are interested in building something and selling it to someone else. In, in the case of our team, we've built three mines in the last 12 years. We've been operating in Mexico for 12 years. We know how to operate down there. And one of the key aspects of the primarily heat bleach gold operations we're looking at, we do it with incredibly low capex. We're not looking to cut corners. We're looking to cut costs in elegant fashions. Um, Right now, we have 200% owned uh, development assets in uh, Sonora and Durango. Um, they are going through the final stages of permitting. And the first one we anticipate to have into production this time next year. Hopefully, I'm up here not as a gold developer, but as a gold producer. Uh, Cisco Gold Royalties is our largest shareholder. They own 13% of the company. And uh, we'll be providing a lot of royalty money to actually build these things as opposed to going to the equity markets. We've got a 35 million market cap right now, two generalist funds in Donald Smith and Aegis, alongside a Cisco owned roughly 30% of the company, other institutions and management, another 15 or so percent. Uh, we've recently had coverage initiated by Cormark Securities and Hayward Securities with 25 and 40 cent targets. Um, we're trading at 10 cents. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll work uh, over the rest of the, this year and next to, uh, to uh, live up to those uh, targets put on us by the, the analysts. We have four million, roughly $4 million in cash right now. And the most important thing, this is something I said in Zurich recently, uh, we will not be going, but coming back to the equity markets to raise the capital requirements for our projects. And I'll get into why uh, we're able to be able to make that statement. The team behind Monero Alamos had a company in 2008. They formed Castle Gold. Uh, they started a 25,000 ounce a year operation. Um, actually, I'll get to that slide in, in, in a second. Here we go. Um, Castle Gold, for 6 million US capex, they built a 25,000 ounce a year operation. Uh, the key for it, we started on a modest resource. We actually want to drill as little as possible with shareholder funds before putting a mine into production. We would much rather, and we think it's far more shareholder friendly, to be able to develop that resource base out of cash flow rather than the constant revolving dance you do with the equity markets. So they expanded that resource. They expanded the production. By the time Argonaut bought it just two years later for 130 million Canadian, they quadrupled that 300,000 resource to 1.25 million ounces. Um, and they did that all out of cash flow. So it's the same team. We're doing it again. Um, and as that slide from Cormark uh, Security shows, we have some of the lowest capital intensity for building these things. So in terms of assets, I'm going to speak largely to our 100% owned Santana and Fortuna assets. Uh, Santana uh, is in Sonora, Fortuna in, in Durango. We have a third asset, a pipeline project, Guadalupe de los Reyes. We're assigning the option to another company. We'll provide equity exposure to us while we focus and have this focus on our 200% owned projects. In the case of Santana, it's remarkably similar to the El Castillo project in Castle Gold. It's going to start at about 300,000 ounces as a resource base. With every asset we look at, we need to see the potential for it to grow to a million, million and a half ounces plus, as, as Castle Gold did. So, so far today, we've completed a 50,000 ton bulk sample. Um, you know, our recovered grade on this deposit is almost twice the head grade of a lot of heat bleach operations in Nevada. It, the, the, the grade in Mexico allows you to build these in a very modular manner. We've completed our commercial production designs. 
And, and this project, we expect to get our notice of approval of permits from the Mexican government by the end of June. Um, and construction would start in September, October after the rainy season, with a goal to being in mining by the end of Q1 of next year and producing in Q2. But we also have lots of exploration, and we want, you know, we don't want to be a bore, even though I think there's tremendous value in, you know, the best way to play the gold market is to be producing the stuff. You know, we're going to do a lot of exploration, but we really want to fund most of this out of cash flow. So all our projects have tremendous exploration upside. We made discoveries last year. Uh, they, they give us a lot of confidence that we're going to be able to grow these resources. And these are just some, uh, the first drilling that's been done in this project in seven years, some of the, the great numbers we pulled. So there will be drilling in the back half of this year, and there's 10,000 meters planned. For tuna, and I'm already six minutes through my 10, uh, I will rush and I'll give the John Grisham version of this, uh, this presentation at the booth for anyone interested. For tuna, is a, a, we had a PEA that came out in August last year. It's a 25 million US mark, uh, capex. I should revert and just say that Santana, we can build a 30,000 ounce a year operation for about eight or nine million Canadian. Uh, for tuna, is slightly higher capex. We're gonna start on a 50,000 ounce a year high grade starter pit. It's three and a half to four grams per ton open pit with about a six to one strip ratio. We have the mill, 2,000 ton a day mill already. Um, and the PEA numbers were, were extraordinary for, for us. It's what we look for, a one year payback or less. Um, again, this resource has plenty of upside on it. There's great exploration uh, you know, around the project, both brownfields and greenfields. And again, will be another focus of what we'll be deploying our cash flow into. We have a third project, Guadalupe uh, a company right now, uh, ePower Metals, uh, to be renamed, I think, Prime Mining, is, uh, is going to take on that project. It's a great asset. We just couldn't devote enough attention to it to do it justice. And they will, and we will have a lot of ex equity exposure in them for that project. Uh, in terms of valuation, you know, here's our growth plan. It's an aggressive plan to get to 150,000 ounces a year. Uh, we can do that, we believe, in three years just on Santana and Fortuna alone. First goal is to get the f them into production and get the first expansion underway on them, and that can probably get us to 100,000 ounces a year within two years, at probably an all-in sustaining cost of about 650 US. So we do not need higher gold prices, but they'll be most welcome should we have them. Uh, this is a production profile, this is from Cormark Securities, showing we can get to that 150,000 ounces a year. Someone asked me, after, you know, what, what, what do you do at that point? And they said, well, at that point it gets fun. At that point we've gone through all the hard work and we've come out of the bottom of the Lausanne curve. You know, at that point hopefully we can be acquiring assets. We don't want to be acquired like Castle Gold. I hope this is the last job I ever do in this business because it means we've executed correctly. You know, once we got to 150, we'll grow out from there. From a cash flow perspective, again, these are Cormark's numbers, they're anticipating, anticipating by 2022 that our cash balance alone would be 90 million US, you know, which is roughly four times our current market cap. So you know, this is where I, I feel we have the ability to be that unicorn kind of stock, the 10 bagger that we're all looking for, you know, and it's going to take execution on our side. But building mines is no, you know, we are no stranger to building mines, so I have a, a tremendous amount of confidence in our technical team's ability in that regard. Obviously, you know, as you go into production, you get re-rates. We're roughly a, you know, quarter nav right now. Um, you know, so we have organic production growth that the majors just can't give anymore. Barrick and Newmont in the late 1990s and 2000s, they were still growing organically. They can't offer that anymore. Then it really plays on the gold price. We think that we can give you that organic production growth and combine that with a gold market, then the numbers can get quite cartoonish. So in terms of catalysts this year, you know, we're expecting to be able to make a, a Santana construction decision in the coming months. For Tuna, which would be the next mine to come on, we'll make that const construction decision next year. Um, we will be drilling. We'd like to do most of it out of cash flow. There is certain drilling we'd like to do this year, so we have a budget for it but mostly in a way to protect shareholders from the constant equity dilution that can happen in the exploration business, um, you know, we want to be doing that out of cash flow. We want to build a sustainable business model. 
And amazingly, I'm nine seconds under time. So you know, with that, uh, I look forward. I'll be around all day tomorrow and uh, happy to, to give you the longer form version. Thank you. Thank you.